All right, guys, serratus posterior superior definitely goes under the radar, definitely. Hidden away. So in terms of where it is, obviously we have our levator scap down here. We have our rhomboids and then just up through here we have our serratus posterior superior. Now, there's a trigger point for it, but usually nine times out of 10, it's actually hidden under the scap. So you'll see the position that Dan's in here. What you're gonna have to do is get your clients to basically come underneath the treatment table and really try and bring that, um, that scap into as much pro pro protraction as you possibly can. So if you find levator scap, which is pretty easy, come down off that and then basically you'll find the trigger point for serratus posterior superior in that position there. It is, can be described as like an ice pick sort of type pain. So it's actually really quite sharp. Um, and if, if you've got clients coming in, you know, complaining of levator scap and rhomboidy pain, and you, for whatever reasons you can't reproduce it, I want you to put serratus posterior superior on the radar. But you're not going to get to the trigger point unless you have them in this position. So that's the most important thing. Otherwise, it's sort of that trigger point just hides just underneath the superior angle of the scap. So in order to get there and in terms of doing what sort of work you want to do with it, it is absolutely important that you have them in this position. Um, and as I said, you'll find levator scap, you come down off that, and then you're sort of gonna have to work as closely to the scap as you possibly can. So you'll probably see this with a lot of desk workers, they'll complain of this. Um, some throwing athletes, um, and then, you know, once again, just, you know, throw in the general public, you know, chippies and all that sort of stuff that do a lot of lifting and all that sort of stuff, just load up. So I'm gonna come in here with just, once again, a broad forearm. And I'm kind of come along the superior angle. I know there's levator scap, and I come down a little bit further from levator scap, and then I'm going to hit that serratus posterior there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lean forward into that sort of superior angle and just push it out of the way and then sink down, and I should be right onto that serratus posterior trigger point. How's that there, Dan? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. Do you want me back off a bit? Is no, it? You're no, okay. not yeah. too much. So yeah, once again, be mindful of your clients in terms of. So now this is a really small muscle, so it's not like you're doing huge gliding techniques. So you just want to do little sweeps across it. So just backwards and forwards, sink down into it. And then what I tend to do is just internally rotate my shoulder and that'll be enough to just glide over and hit that trigger point just backwards and forwards. So once again, just it's, you know, it's a hidden trigger point. That's what it is. So difficult to get to unless you've got them in this position. And, but it will make all the difference, especially if you're been working to that rhomboid, levata scap, even you know a little bit of the infraspinatus, thinking, oh, I can't find that, that specific pain that they have. So absolutely 100% put so serratus posterior superior into your, your treatment mix. So it's really, really important. So working across there. And back down and as i said it is like a, it's sometimes it can be described as an ice pick component and sometimes it'll be involved in like i said you know some of your throwing athletes sometimes it'll be just your postural load clients um there'll be a variety of them but if they've got that pain where they you know they tend to be pointing towards the levator scap but you can't reproduce any through levator scap you're not quite hitting the mark that's when serratus posterior superior will be your friend